Hello everyone, I am Naval Yamul. Welcome back to my YouTube channel Data Master. In this video, I am going to explain you about the object inside a catalog explorer of Databricks. We are going to talk about external location and storage credential. Let me show you the documentation of it. So, storage credential is nothing but a Unity catalog object used to abstract the long term credential from your cloud storage of providers so uh, like before the unity catalog we used to mount your external storage objects like your blob and adls via using multiple ways we used to do by using access key sas token and service principle but with the help of unity catalog you can easily mount your external cloud objects like your adls or blob with the help of storage credential and external location inside your catalog explorer so once you create these two you can easily access or you can easily browse all your objects or all your files which are there inside your adls so we are going to create storage credential and then we are going to create a external location external location is again an object of the unity catalog that is used to associate a cloud object storage URI with a storage credential. So in simple words, it's just like a mount point. So we used to pass a access key or we used to create an app using a service uh, like with a service principle. And then we used to pass all our keys using an Azure key vault and then use an Databricks Azure Databricks secret scopes. And we used to store all the keys there but it's a very long process but now we can shorten it by using this two objects inside an unity catalog that is called external location and storage credential so let me show you hands on how to create a storage credential and how you can access all your objects or all your data in your databricks via using these two things so first thing i need to create a storage credential so let me click on storage credential and then click on this create a credential. So I'll choose a credential type as Azure managed identity. You have two options here. Let me choose ident managed identity. Then it's asking me for the storage credential name. So you can give any storage credential name. So in my case, I'll write data master data bricks. Okay, bricks. And now it's asking for the access connector ID. So we have to create this access connector ID from your Azure account. So I have already opened my Azure account here, portal.azure.com. And you can just check for the access connector for the Azure Databricks. You can type it here or I have recently opened this. I'll just click on it and I already created one. I mean, I have not created it. The moment when I was creating an Azure Databricks by default, the access connector is created. A default storage account is also created but that is for all uh, Databricks account that is for all managing your metadata but if you have an external storage account and if you want to make a connection then we need to use storage credential for storage credential we need this access connector so let me just click on this create and just give a name so my, in my case the subscription is pay as you go model and I would just take a resource group as data master and the name I'm going to give here is, uh, for example, data master access. Okay, access. Let me just click on next. Tags, I'll just leave it. Yes, I'll just keep a manage identity as enabled and then click on review plus create. So it's going to take few minutes to review. And once the review has done, we'll just click on create. So we need to do, uh, we need to take this access connector and then put it in the storage credential and also you have to give an access to this access connector so you need to remember the name of this access connector now your access connector has been deployed let me go to the resource and the name of my access connector is data master access and you can see here you got a resource id just copy this resource id and then come back to your databricks and here you just pass your access connector ID. Okay, so before you pass it, I'll okay, I'll just create this storage credential. In the external location, we might get an error. 
and I'll show you why we generally get the error. So remember our storage credential name is data master bricks. I'll go back to the catalog explorer and okay, you can access the catalog explorer and the external location via using this tab called external data and you should see two tabs here. So data master data bricks or data master bricks is the new storage credentials just now we created. Now let me go to external location and let me create a new location. Click on create a location and now it's asking me to copy from the mount point and what would be the name. So in my case, the name is data bricks or data master bricks data bricks external location. So I'm taking this name from my storage account. If you go back, so I have a storage account called data master data bricks. So I want to make a connection with this storage account. Okay. So this storage account, I have mounted it by traditional method, but now we are going to connect it via using external location or uh, external location and storage credentials. So here storage credentials. Now I'll pick it. It's my data master bricks. And now it is asking you for the URL. So look at the URL. So the URL should be your ABFSS. Then you pass a container name and then you pass a storage account name and then dfs.core.windows.net and you specify the path. So let me start here. I'll write ABFSS. It's a driver now. And those who have mounted it traditional way by using a service principle, they should easily get this point or those who are not done it, not an issue guys. So let me go to container. So we need to fetch a container name. In my case, container name is raw. So I'll just put a raw here at the rate and here I'm, it is asking me for the storage account name. So in my case, storage account name is this one. I'll just copy this. I'll come back and I'll paste it here. Okay. Put a dot DFS dot core dot windows dot net. And then it's asking me the path. If I have any specific folders inside this or a directories, I can pass it. So I have a data master DB or I'll just create a new directory here saying it's a bronze. Okay. I'll just say bronze and I'll click on. Okay. So giving a path is not mandatory. You can skip that part. Also it works. Let me just copy and paste it here. I'll just remove the comment and let me click on create. Uh, it is asking me copy from the mount point. So I'll just keep that point. If you want, you can check it and you can give a mount point path. For example, it's mount Databricks raw. This is what I have created by using a traditional method. I'll just keep that point. If I try to create it, you should get an error message. Can you see that you got an error message saying that it skipped the read uh, least and write got failed and other two got skipped but the path exists and the hierarchical namespace is also enabled. So if you click on force create, it will not mount it correctly guys. The reason is uh, we have created an access connector and we are uh, pulling out the data from the storage account. So we have to give you give the access control to the access connector Databricks Azure Databricks access connector. So to do that, let me go to the storage account and just click on the access control and in the access control, I have to assign a role. Let me click on this add a role assignment and okay. It should be a storage blob data contributor access. So let me take this storage. Let me type it for the storage here and let me search. Yeah, storage blob data contributor. Let me just select this, go for the next and it's asking you for the members, select the members. And in my case, if you remember that is data master access was one of our, yeah, this is our access connector. So you have to give the access for this. Let me click on next and go for the next step. Yeah. Conditions. I'll go for the next step and I'll just click on review plus assign. I'll just wait for a moment. Yeah, I think the role has added it. Let me go back and now I'll just copy this guys. I'll just copy this and I'll try to keep it in somewhere here because I have to cancel this and I have to recreate it again. Okay. Let me click on create an external location and paste the URL, which I have copied it few minutes back. 
so here it's a data master bricks and now i'll give a external location called data master data bricks okay and now let me just click on create now let us see what happens so still it's failing give me a let me start now again create a location so i'll just paste this once again i'll just write a name data master data bricks is my storage account name it can be anything data bricks and then i'll choose the storage credential called data master bricks and then i'll try to create it so initially we were getting an error and now you can see that it successfully created an external location so with this you can just click on the browse and you can see you should see the bronze folder just now we have created in our storage account and you can see data master db so if you click on it you can see all the files and folders what uh, we were seeing it in our storage account so let me quickly test one thing so if you go back let me browse it again i don't know how to go back uh, we have a back button yeah i think it is here okay cool so if you can click on browse you can see bronze folder doesn't have any content here let me go back and click on this data master data bricks and now um, let me click on the container and i'll try to upload a file here let me get inside this let me go to the bronze and then i'll try to upload a sample file here let me click on upload Give me a moment, guys. So I have a sample CSV file. I'll just try to upload that CSV file here. I'll just hit on upload and you can see here it's got uploaded. Let me go back and check it in our storage. Yeah, you can see here beautifully. So within few seconds, whatever the data we have uploaded, you can see it here. And now you don't need to really mount it just use a storage credential and on top of that create an external location and you can see your file is here you can copy this and you can start working on creating a data frame or you can start creating a table by using spark sql